Wells became a leader in anti-lynching and essentially almost invented it, I would say, because of a sort of terrible personal experience she had. It was a terrible lynching in Memphis in which three black men were killed, and one of them was a man named Thomas Moss, a local businessman as well as a local mailman who was a friend of Wells along with his wife. Wells is, is out of town when this happens, and she comes back to find black people fleeing Memphis, her friend Thomas dead along with two other men. She had been thinking that, you know, she would live in the South and she would work to make it a better place. But when she looked at someone like Thomas Moss, who had been a uh, devout churchgoer, taught Sunday school, invested in his own business, done everything that the sort of world said that blacks needed to do to get ahead, and then had ended up being lynched, she began to question whether you could really do anything in the South. She published an editorial that went essentially too far in saying all this, um, and a white mob stormed the office of the free speech and destroyed the printing press. Wells was fortunate she wasn't there, but the mob left a note basically telling whoever was printing the newspaper that they should leave town and putting a death threat. She ended up in New York, where she was hired by T. Thomas Fortune, the publisher of the New York Age, and led what was basically sort of the first anti-lynching campaign, where she identified lynching as a crime and was trying to push the government and social reformers to take action about it. Anti-lynching would become a major commitment for the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, and it would also be a major commitment of black women's clubs and other civil rights organizations.